In this video, we're going to talk about why it is that many modern homes still need to be retrofitted. The way the building code reads is it says, put a bolt every six feet. And it really doesn't take into account uh, earthquake design to make sure that the building can actually resist earthquakes. It's made for contractors and building officials so that it's just so simple that um, they really can't make a mistake and it'll help. So in this video, you're going to see um, what you need to do to really make a designed uh, retrofit for your house the way it should have been done in the first place. So one of the things that um, is very, very important is there's actually a code deficiency that is still in the building code, and you'll see what it is. This house was built with half-inch bolts spaced every six feet on the entire perimeter foundation. We know this is true because when it was built, the city it was built in had adopted the Uniform Building Code, which has required bolting since 1935. One of the ways we know this house does not have a cripple wall is the fact that it only has one or two steps that lead into the front door. The red arrow points to the floor that you walk on. The blue arrow points to the top of the foundation. In between is the floor framing that supports the entire house. The purpose of our retrofit is to attach this floor framing to the foundation so that in an earthquake it does not slide off the foundation. The red arrows represent earthquake forces trying to push the house off the foundation. On the left, you can see the earthquake force is trying to push the end joist and the mud sill off the foundation, but the mud sill is restrained from movement by the bolts. On the right hand side, we see the earthquake force pushing against the rim joist, the floor joist, and the mud sill. Again, the bolts are restraining the mud sill from movement. As we will see, even though our house is already bolted, we will discover that on two sides of the house, we don't have enough bolts. Our retrofit will consist of adding bolts to these two sides. In addition, in our retrofit, we need to make sure that the end joist, the floor joist, and the rim joist do not slide off of the mud sill. This is the second and a very important part of our retrofit. In 1935, the Uniform Building Code started requiring houses be bolted with a half-inch bolt on the entire perimeter of the foundation. Even though it was in the building code, the history of the building code had just started and very few municipalities had adopted it. Adoption of the code took many years and was on a piecemeal basis. So it was important that you call your building department and ask them when your city adopted the uniform building code. If it had already been adopted when your home was built, you can be sure your house is bolted with a half inch bolt spaced every six feet. It is my personal experience after looking at thousands of homes that homes built after 1957 are generally bolted. This rectangle represents a perimeter foundation of a home that has been bolted with a bolt every six feet. As you can see when this happens we only have half the number of bolts on the two short walls as on the long walls. So here we have four bolts on the short walls and eight bolts on the long walls. That means that the two short foundations are only half as resistant to earthquakes as the two long foundations. The earthquake force represented by the green arrow is resisted by the bolts on the two short foundations. The earthquake force represented by the red arrow is resisted by the bolts on the long foundations. In our retrofit, we want to make sure that the two short foundations are just as strong as the two long foundations by adding additional bolting. Doing this will make the house twice as earthquake resistant as it was before. The red lines here represent foundation anchors, which, as discussed previously, function to bolt the mud sill to the foundation. 
We are installing four foundation anchors here because each foundation anchor has the strength of one bolt. So when we are done, we have the equivalent of eight bolts on the two short foundations. We have eight bolts on the two side foundations. So now this house is equally bolted on all sides and is twice as strong as it was before. As shown previously, this illustrates how the end joist can slide on top of the bolted mud sill. This movement is prevented by the installation of shear transfer ties. So why is it that the end joists tend to slide on top of the mud sill even in newer bolted homes? Since 1971, the building code has required that the end joists be nailed to the mud sill with just three nails. This is the case even today. The average end joist to mud sill connection will be required to resist at least 5,000 pounds of earthquake force in the event of a large earthquake. These three nails can only resist 360 pounds of earthquake force. For this reason, on every house, including those built as of today, must have shear transfer ties installed to resist that force. Even if your house was built today, it is quite possible that the connection between the end joist and your mud sill can only resist 360 pounds of earthquake force. This is because a house can be built this way and be fully code compliant. This is a photograph of how the end joist is attached to the mud sill with shear transfer ties. As with everything else, we use the base shear formula to figure out how many shear transfer ties we need. The fact that a new house can be built with only three nails attaching to the end joist to the mud sill is a clear oversight in the building code. As a member of the International Code Council, I am currently working to have this code provision changed. However, it will probably take many years. Again, the code requires that each floor joist be nailed to the mud sill with three nails. As you can see here, where the joists run perpendicular to the foundation and to the mud sill, each joist will receive three nails. This is more than adequate to resist our anticipated earthquake force. We need not worry about the rim joists because if the floor joists do not move, the rim joists won't move either. Here's a photograph of the joist sitting on top of the mud sill and the foundation when the floor joists run perpendicular to the foundation. Each one of these joists will have three nails attaching it to the mud sill. You can assume each one of the joists on your house has these three nails unless it was built before December of 1971, in which case you should check. This is a photograph of some shear transfer ties that have been installed to attach the end joists to the mud sill. It also shows a foundation anchor that has been added to strengthen the connection of the mud sill to the foundation. Again, we only need to do this on the two short foundations so that we can make them equally strong as the two long foundations. The black lines here represent shear transfer ties. Shear transfer ties attach the end joist to the mud sill. We install two shear transfer ties for every bolt and two shear transfer ties for every new foundation anchor. When we are all done, the strength of our connection with the shear transfer ties will equal the strength of our connection with the bolts. And we now have a complete retrofit 
that will make sure this home stays on its foundation and it is twice as strong as it was before. So anyway, I, I hope it's clear to you um, that there are things you can do even if your house is, is retrofitted. These sort of houses that are on level lots and have, have been well secured to the foundations are pretty much uh, bulletproof in, in earthquakes. They do extremely well. When I was working for FEMA, um, the houses that were well secured to their foundations uh, did, had very, very little damage. They had sheetrock cracks, um, no broken windows that, that I saw. Um, crack tiles if they have a tile roof, and that's about it. Um, however, if they slide on the foundation, uh, then it's a different story, especially for internal damage. So anyway, I hope you um, watch the video and understand why it is that you can still do a lot and that there are certain connections that are extremely important because the building code really is deficient in one area. Thank you.